All right, Kamuji, give me a countdown. Da da ti da, da da ti da, da da ti da. Short and sweet. Short and sweet. That was really simple. I didn't even finish a sip of my water. Uh, I thought I had a good some time. Welcome to another episode of Absolute Focus. Um, I'm really tired. I just got back from England. Apparently, people have been listening to our podcast, and and we always start a podcast with. I'm really, I'm really tired. tired. <laughs> Is that what everybody says? They're like, yeah, there was a yeah, few people who picked up on commonality that. here. Yeah. <laughs> We are tired. You guys do a podcast then. <laughs> no, man. This is so hard. You have no idea. <laughs> when did you get back from London or England? Uh, just a couple of days ago. But my jet lag, I don't know. Normally, like, it takes me a day or so. and it's But not... we have been in a two-month deficit. Oh, yeah. So, bas- so <laughs> Komoji just played with uh, my teacher's Tatari Khan at the Festival of Tabla. And that was one of the best concerts I've nice. been to in my wow. life. Where best was concert it? concert of my life. Yeah, it was, it was in here in Cerritos. Cerritos. Yeah, yeah, see? But uh, <laughs> a lot of my circle. Gurbais flew in. We had a lot of guests come. Um, and, and it was gigs. super hectic. And yeah, we also had two gigs the week before. Yay. And so we were totally sleep deprived. And then I went to England. And where then, my kid, I was then our more, kids got sick, so then I didn't sleep. <laughs> yeah. So then I was more sleep deprived in England. But I'm it was all liked. awesome. Isn't yeah. it fun, though, when you're really tired, you have this kind of weird, crazy energy? Yeah. It's I was true. really tired last night, and I was at, I, I started uh, working with this a cappella singing group, and I was really worried. I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm, how am I going to learn this new music, and blah, blah, blah. But I just had this, like, crazy energy that nothing else would have worked, you know? Yeah. Like, even sitting around and talking to my husband, I would just sit there and complain about how tired I am, yeah. you know? But then when you're forced to yeah, you just do, do something that you love, it's just... It's true. Yeah. So... You guys are probably wondering who you're listening to. <clears throat> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, it's cool. Um, this is, uh, she's an amazing, she wears like so many hats, like you can't even count. So she's a choreograph, choreographer, she's a dancer, she's an actress, she's a writer, she's a singer, singer. she's a percussionist. <laughs> and those are just the ones that we know about. I'm sure there's like social media manager and talent agent and like booking agent. So you have to do all that kind of stuff for yourself. Exactly, These are all different right. hats we have to wear. Right. But she wears like way more than we do. And she's like equally awesome in all of them. Pretty much. Uh, and uh, we've gotten to work with, so I got to work with her before we were married. Yeah. Uh, I got to do a recording session with her for uh, one of her projects, which I, I'm sure she'll talk about. Um, and then we did uh, a like the a, project at East West Players. Yeah, project oh, at East West Oh, and in between Players. that, we did, we did something at the Ford Amphitheater. The Ford, we did, yeah, the remember story that little yeah. thing? Yeah. So, <laughs> Holy uh, crap, you got us to dance. That was scary. That was great. <laughs> really, really great. <laughs> cringe. <laughs> cringe. <laughs> video. Yeah, we need to get rid of those videos. <laughs> we, uh, we're really honored and thrilled to have Shudal Gandhi today. Yay. Yay. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, what have you been up to? I have been making a home. So we just bought this home in Altadena. It's my first house. But I guess I've always really been into design and decorating and sort of making a space, like personalizing it. Yeah. Um, like even when I would tour a lot, I would always, you know, whatever. Yeah, even like, off, I'm there for nice. two weeks, just I'll like bring my little thing. Yeah. And so we have all this space, like a huge backyard and front yard that was nothing. It was just empty dirt, weeds. So for the past couple of years, I've just been gung-ho, and I had a full-time job for two years, so I had money to do this, and it's an amazing space now, and I have these hopes of having salons and, you know, uh, just hosting people, like having a space, almost like a retreat, that people can come and feel their creative juices, um, meet others. I just, I love hosting and nurturing and making these kind of magical spaces, so... That's what I've been doing. I mean, I've been doing other things, but that has been yeah, this so that, new thing. That takes a lot of time and energy. As yeah. you can see around, because you can get carried away. Yeah. Totally. Stripes With black everywhere. and white stripes. <laughs> yeah. But it's nice. I like how there's, they're different uh, widths. Yeah, they're you can see there's a lot of thought they're in that. Yeah, so there's like a lot of math that went into that. <laughs> he it. did a lot of math for this. They're decreasing by, uh, you know, the golden ratio or God's number or whatever you want to call it. Uh, um, I don't. So it's in nature, like everywhere, like yeah. all the different spirals. Or oh, like yes, the yes, distance yes, yes. From like your nose to your chin or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, the, eyes between, and chin and mouth. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's like all over nature in trees. Yeah, and, yeah. trees, uh, right. shells, right. snail shells. So that they call it God's number or the golden ratio. And so these lines are decreasing. Oh, Fibonacci's. Yeah, the uh-huh, Fibonacci's. I've heard series. of that, yeah. right. So they're, they're decreasing in that ratio. 
Well, uh, well, God's <laughs> number. You can't go wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it kind of, wild you know, with out. all the stripes, you kind of feel like it's a fast house. <laughs> you know, it's like we yeah. get things done fast. And every room, so this is just here. So every room is a different color. Yeah. And has wow. a different feeling. Yeah. So paint, paint has been a big part That's of That's all we could life. afford. Yeah. So we went crazy. It's and then true. these lights that you're looking at right here. So there was like some really rusted chandeliers and stuff when we moved in. Mm -hmm. And then when we looked at new chandeliers, we're like, oh, that's a lot of money. And right. So this really is go. plywood and like six dollar kitchen lights. Totally. I'm telling you, we were just saying how the shoot, you know, Gumaljeet, you're like, don't tell people how much you're spending on it. Don't say it's cheap, otherwise, people I mean, fool them. I mean, I will sell it for like twenty five thousand dollars. Exactly. <laughs> That's what people that. sell things for yeah. now on Craigslist. Yeah. So, you know, they like look this like little they junky look cool. piece of crap, yeah. and they're like, this is you know, but it feels good for bargain. Bargains feel good. Bargains yeah. feel great. That's what we do. You know. We make magic out of very little, you know? Definitely. It's that creative spirit. That's why it is magic. Yeah. Can't make magic with tons of money. No, but I, I don't mind if I can. Uh, give me all the out. money. Can, exactly. <laughs> that, uh, that could be my new challenge, how to make magic <laughs> with, lots, with of money. lots of money. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So why don't we, like, because I don't even know this about you, like, where did the artist in you start? Where, um, what is, what's Little Sheetal doing? Little Sheetal <laughs> would go to this little restaurant where there would be a musician on the stage playing old-timey piano, like a pizza parlor. You know, like, can you imagine oh, wow. that old-time piano? And that's one of my first memories of going to the restaurant and being like, I need to be up on that stage with that guy playing the wow. piano. And I would just, like, run up on the stage. And it was just, I think, the joy of being able to express myself, whatever I felt, like, listening to music would make me feel a certain way and then I wanted to just share that with everybody and so there's a stage everyone's looking at the stage so I'm going to go on the stage and just move my everyone. body and just enjoy, like, sort of share in that spirit so I think it comes from a very like just a, a spirited place like a mm. place of very intuitive not very thought through strategic you know, just very intuitive place um, and then I started playing the piano that was the first thing I was doing because I had a musical ear, which I didn't even realize what that was until many, many years later. But my dad had a musical ear. But of course, they could never pursue the arts, right? right. Living in India, that was never an option. Yeah. And so he noticed that, you know, he had a, we had a little, those toy xylophones. And he would just kind of plunk out Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and I would just pick it up. And so they put me in piano lessons. So I did that and until I was in uh, Walnut Creek. Oh, okay. Up in the Bay Area. So I did that for until I was 13 and all the while I was doing like Indian folk dancing at Diwali programs and very again unstructured but just whatever my parents knew was in their sort of milieu you know they, yeah. they didn't know anything else and then in sixth grade um, one of my school teachers who loved dance told my parents they said you know you should put her in dance classes and I overheard that and I was like yes yes and then that took over and I think the piano playing was such an isolated thing you mm. just do it by yourself and the social part of me wanted to be in dance class more yeah. so then I, I gave up the piano mm. and uh, and started dancing and all the while I was acting but dance really takes I think I don't mean that singing or acting or music you know music takes less dedication but time wise in terms of the time in your life like you can't choose to suddenly be a professional dancer when you're 47 years old, yeah. right. right? It's Why so not? it felt suddenly like this is what's urgent. And so that became my focus, even though I always kind of acted and sang and did those other things less. So um, what, are, what are these dance classes? Like what oh, I started, uh, I started in tap when I was eight. Oh, wow. I was taking tap classes. So that percussion, the percussion right. part of me um, kind of, was really at home in that. Um, and again, this is suburbia, so there wasn't a lot of dance. And so I think I was taking at some community center with uh, other kids, and I got as advanced as I could with those kids, and then the teachers are like, well, we'll put her with the adults. And then I got as advanced as I could in the adults, and this is all like in a year, and they're like, we don't have anything else for her. Hmm. So then there was this big gap where I didn't dance again. I didn't take any classes until I was about 13. 
Yeah, 12, 13. Oh, wow. And then that was jazz, ballet, just whatever you could get in suburbia. Oh. And then I didn't find modern dance until I got to college. I went to UC Irvine um, and double majored in dance and psychology. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, that whole, I mean, and that was a whole thing, right? Like, this is 19... I mean, I started college in 1990, but in 1988, I already knew, like, I, I want to I wanna be a dancer. Yeah. And you can imagine the chaos that that created, like, in right. the family. Indian families. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's different now so because... So was the psychology there solely as a backup, or did you actually enjoy it? I love psychology. I actually would have done physiology and dance, because I always said if I wasn't going to be a dancer, I was going to be a doctor. And in a way, I do both because I teach Pilates. That's another thing you don't know about me. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, so I'm a Pilates instructor. So I know a lot about physical therapy and just to heal my own injuries. But then, you know, (laughs) take an interest in, you know, how you you figure out what's going on yourself. And that gives you an interest in in helping others. So, Uh, but no, I wanted to. I I was very ambitious. Like, I wanted to do everything. I thought if I could split myself into five different people Mm. and do all these different things, you know, but you can't. So you no. do your best. Um, you know, and I always think, I always think, you know, it's great that I have all these interests, but it does spread you out. It and di- I always wonder. Everything. I was like that kind of, because I wanted to do mm-hmm. art and music together. I was like, I can do it. I'm good. I can do it. I've got no other things on my mind. I can be an artist. I'm going to be a mm-hmm. musician, but it can't. It yeah, happen. it depends how far you want to go, <laughs> yeah. you know. And, and then you just have to be true to yourself in this lifetime. It's like, well, am I yeah. going to be an absolute master known for one thing. And what are the chances you are going to be yeah. known yes. for that one thing, that yeah. you are going to be that one genius? Um, and not only that one genius, but that time and space reality and like being at the right place yes. at the right time, yeah, everything converges. Yeah. Yeah. It's super hard. You don't have control over that. So yeah. the only thing, you know, you realize you have control over is like that, you know, follow your bliss. Like go where your spirit takes you. So, yeah, yeah so then I just, did, I double majored and, dance and psychology not for them but I think maybe that there was some placating right but it really it, I just needed to prove to them once once I didn't give up it was like they had to accept it yeah so was yeah. there like in the dance program at UCI was is there a, like a specific style or or emphasis that you take or is it more broad you can choose like a performance or choreography or teaching and remember at the time I don't know what it's like now Uh Um, so I think my emphasis was performance and choreography okay and I choreographed a lot and I performed a lot and it was great I mean just at that time between age 18 and 22 when you are at the prime as a dancer in your I mean, people will say different things, like you, you mature as a dancer, but physically, physically mm-hmm. yeah, physically I was able to do things at 18 and 19 that I wouldn't even want to do now. Um, <laughs> but I got to do so much. I got to perform so much and really dip into, I got to work with the theater department. Um, it was really great. And it launched me, like put me in the right mindset to move to New York and start a professional career. like just pounding the pavement, yeah. auditioning for so musicals you, and plays. So you did that right after school or? I, so when I, was in, um, when I was in college, when I was at Irvine, I was very, there was a part of me that was always very drawn to African music, African art. I didn't know anything about it, but again, this is like your yeah. instinct just telling you like, there's more for you here. And so I took a year off or as an exchange student and I went to Ghana from 1993 to 1994. It was a whole so year. It was a whole year, long, yeah. totally. And I was deeply immersed in the culture. Uh, learned to play West African xylophone and lots of drum rhythms. And you know, I, I, it got to the point where I could like look at someone's scarification or I could look at their features and know exactly what ethnic group they were from. Oh. You know, in <laughs> Ghana, like it was really, really. Neat, and to also see all the similarities between India and Ghana, mm. between countries that would be considered developing countries, and just the warmth and the hospitality, and that feeling like everybody is there's not this sense of, oh, this is my space and this is your space, but you know, welcome so. with open arms. Yeah, so did you stay with a the family there? I know I was in the dorms for the first six months Where? because I went uh, in Accra. Oh, okay in Accra. But then because I was really immersed in the local dance scene, I moved to where a lot of the company members were just in this little village. 
No, it wasn't even a village. It's a small town. It looked like a village back then. Like, I had to go fetch my water. I'd have to walk a quarter mile to fetch my water to bathe. Wow. <laughs> it's just like, it sounds so crazy. Yeah. Um, but I just, I really, my experience there, I really wanted to live lo- as locally as I could. I wanted mm-hmm. to live not like someone that had dollars that could easily bypass the hardship, but I wanted to f- get as close to the culture as possible. So I lived with these other, this group that I was dancing with. And then we would travel to, you know. That takes a lot of guts. Yeah, I have definitely have <laughs> guts. I, that was one thing that I realized I have, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Just take, take risks. So, yeah, that was good. And then you were asking about... Um, so how you got to New York? Oh, yeah. So when I got back, I had one more year at UC Irvine. And then there's a program called the New York Program where you can audition and... It's more like a musical theater program where they take you to New York for a month and you take classes, you audition. I don't know if we audition. You get audition prep. You take classes with all these people from the industry. Mm. And it was just the right little launching pad for Mm. me. And then, um, you know, got my first apartment in New York uh, with four other people. And those are just great memories, you know, yeah, where you're yeah, like, that sounds fun. I mean, I remember I went to New York with a thousand dollars in my pocket. I still remember I went with a thousand dollars with no idea, but I was completely set on making a life there. And the day and speaking of being tired, for some reason, I had insomnia for nine days before that. Probably it was crazy. Super excited. I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, we went to the doctor, too. And I was like, Can you give me something like I'm losing my mind. And he's like, no, no, you know, it's just, it'll go away. And I got to New York, and as soon as I got there, you know, the program started, and I told everyone, I was like, you guys go, I can't even think straight. I'm just going to go in this hotel room, which we had for a month, and took a hot bath, drank some chamomile tea, and I actually slept for five hours. I woke up, and I still remember I went downstairs to the little uh, restaurant, and it was like I was in a movie, you know, like I walked in, and this this old man shuffles in and she's like, hey, Fred, you know, what will you have? You know, the the usual. He's like, yeah. I'll have the usual, you know. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> you know, I'm in New York, you know. And yeah, I got on a pay phone and called my dad. I'm like, dad, I'm here. I love it. And I slept for five hours and life is great, you know. So that's it awesome. just, yeah, it started like that. And just, you know, all my furniture was like stuff I'd find on the street and yeah, you could have me here over and over. I would have so many stories for you <laughs> about like being an artist and like all those great like beginning well, stories. Well, let's have we some need of people. That. Yeah, tell us some stories, man. Okay, so well, speaking of getting furniture off the street, there was um, you know my roommates were like kind of like amazed at how I could like find a couch and be like, guys, come on, look at this couch. We're gonna pick it up and bring it into the you know to the place and we were just furnishing our our place from found stuff so they were teasing me in the beginning but I think they kind of got into it because then they brought in this um butcher block you know like something it's kind of like where you would cut things and there's that little side place where you put the knives Mm -hmm. and they brought it in and and, oh we're like this is great for the kitchen but I saw a little cockroach come out of it and I'm like guys you got to clean this up before we keep it in the house so let's put it on the balcony give it a good raid, whatever you got to use. So two weeks goes by and uh, it starts pouring rain and I'm the only one at home. I'm like, crap, I got to get that butcher block out from the balcony or it's going to get ruined. So I brought it in and I'm like, well, they must have cleaned it up by now. So I'm going to get it all set up. (laughs) You know, so I started like setting it up and then I see another cockroach come out. I'm like, damn it, they didn't do anything. And so I grabbed some raid, you know, I'm like, well, I'm just, uh-oh. And I don't like killing things. So I'm yeah. very like, so I didn't even want to kill that one cockroach. I just put a glass over it. And then I thought, well, let me just, I don't know what I was thinking. I'm like, let me just spray some raid in this hole where all the knives are. And so I did that. Uh-oh. I sprayed. So and many came It was out. like a horror story. Uh-oh. Like they just all started dropping like, pop, 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 oh, pop, pop. And like, <laughs> That's terrible. I, I saw oh, hundreds of cockroaches just like streaming out of this. Jesus. And I'm like, and so I just went on a wild rampage and I just murdered like a bazillion cockroaches. <laughs> oh my God. And then I put a sign on the door. I'm like, you deal with the rest. I'm, I'm out. Oh you know? my God. That but was nasty. 
Yeah, fun, you know, <laughs> fun beginnings. Fun Roommates, beginnings. you need a guide of how to pick stuff when you're getting off the street. <laughs> totally, yeah. You got to, like, have the eye. You got to have the no cockroach touch. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And it was we, good. We used to do that. I was in Madrid for about four months, and they had loads of, like, skips there were full of awesome things. Yeah. So I used to take, like, little things as well, just like, oh, this is cool. I can use this in my art. Oh, the, yeah. If I had somewhere to put this, I'd totally put this here. They have yeah. this thing in Altadena. I haven't checked it out, but I see it on Facebook. It's called Buy Nothing Altadena. And the whole concept is that if you're getting rid of something, someone else might need it. Mm. Mm. And it's really neat. Yeah, it yeah. sounds cool. It's a great concept. It's like swapping. Yeah, I like that. <clears throat> Which I do that with clothes with my friends all the time. You know? Um, so yeah, New York days. Have you guys lived in New York? No. I've been no. to New York twice, very briefly. Yeah. Once was we for a gig. gig in the Room and Museum. Was it there? Oh, with Ginger. No, Ruben. The Asian Art Museum. Asian Art Museum. Yep. Oh, yeah. We played a gig there. Yeah. That was a long... That was 2012. That was, so we haven't been since that. Isn't that was weird years how ago, long yeah. 2012 is, <laughs> yeah, though? Like, yeah. this is just weird to me. I feel like there was a period of time, just even a few years ago, where I didn't think the 90s was that long ago. Yeah. yeah. And... Man, I was listening to some tunes from the 90s. It felt so awesome. Yeah. They had some good tunes in the 90s. They did. And actually, the <laughs> 80s, people are playing the 80s, like, in yes. so many places I go, which I love, because... It's so musical 80s is and just melodious a happy time. and yeah. fun. He loves 80s music. Yeah, because yeah, yeah they, there's melody. I think yes. the synthesizers and all that was pretty like they were the in sound. their infancy, right? So they were kind of whack. Yes, but, but like if you look at what the music that was written, yes. like it was beautiful. Yes, and then. Like, I don't know, in the 2000s or whatever, it's just robots talking. Like, well, <laughs> See, and I never know. I never know. I'm like, is this just what every generation does? They're like, maybe. They're like, oh, there's a siren in this song. Well, that's what, who cares? I know. That's not music. I know. I mean, is this just what, are we just falling into the same trap where we're like, the music now is not as good as the music then. Is I'm that sure. just like the... it must be one probably? I mean, but beyond that, like so, that's on the western side. Like on the Indian side, I'm listening to stuff. Like everybody I listen to is dead. That's yeah. true. Like, like from before I was born. Lot. Like the yeah. guys that I listen to. So I don't know. <laughs> We're old souls. Is that what somebody said? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 another way of saying fuddy duddy. I think. <laughs> yeah, <probably. laughs> that's yeah, a I've... funnier way of saying it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know. I I I'm like I love the '80s. I love, you know, I love the '80s music. When I hear the stuff that's kind of in pop charts now, I'm like, gosh, this is awful. <laughs> it kind of sounds the same. It all sounds the same. With the same like tone and frequency and uh, yeah. vibe. It's like there's no. This fine. Okay, great. You like this music, but can you have some variety? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. Right. I think it's because yeah. if something hits, then like another 25 yeah. people want to like, do, do the same thing, so that yeah. theirs can hit. I don't know. Well, and that can happen these days, right? So, so many more people can create. Yeah. Everyone wants to be a star. Everybody yeah. is a star. Everybody's on social media. So that is so different. Mm -hmm. Like to get an audience back when I started, you know, to be an artist was not something that you could instantly get. It yeah. was like you had to, you to follow, work, hard. To work really, really hard. Find people, flyer. Is this even the right place, right? Yeah, it takes so much time and now, Nobody went viral back then, right? That there wasn't, yeah, wasn't anything. It's not that, even a word that yeah, existed then. Totally. So it's just a different time. It's like, and it's not a bad thing. It's this idea of anybody can do anything. Which is, I mean, what we're doing right now. <laughs> right. Yeah, man. I mean, we're musicians, but we're having chats on our couch. Yeah, which is great. Actually, yeah. that's like, if you're an old soul, you think that's probably what all artists did they found time to do that right mm. yeah like the writers yeah, we love talking that's how we get creative yeah that's how we bounce ideas off this is just what we do yeah we just stick a camera up that's all <laughs> yeah that's true you should wave <laughs> hi <clears throat> how long were you in new york then i was in new york the first time from 96 to 99 and that's when I got my equity card. I did uh, Children of Eden. That's one of the bigger things that I did, which oh. was supposed to, the hope. So it was uh, created, written, uh, the music was written by Stephen Schwartz, who is the same person that did Wicked. Now, Wicked made it. Mm. Children of Eden did not end up going to Broadway, which was a real disappointment for him. It was a beautiful musical. 
um, I think one of my favorite musicals that I'd, I'd done. But then it ended up getting picked up by all these regional theaters and you know a lot of colleges and even high schools did it. Um, but th actually, that didn't get me my equity card. I did a show called Fables. But basically, once Wait, I had my equity, equity card, card, it meant that now I was a professional actor. I oh, was okay. union. Okay. Oh, okay. So as an actor, you, you, you're non-union mm -hmm. until you're union. And then the goal at that time was to become union. But you never knew how you could be union. So the way you become union is by doing a union show. Okay. So then it's really funny because if you're non-union and you're auditioning for a union show, the thing is they're going to prioritize giving union shows to union actors. So yeah. it's like you're trying to squeeze right. into this little hole as a non-union actor. Yeah. And again, right time, right place. I went to an audition for something else. The casting directors saw me and thought, oh, she would be good for this other show that we're casting. And they flew the directors in from, um, they were from Norway and Czechoslovakia at the time, wow. and um, flew them in to see me. Wow. Because they'd already finished auditioning for this show called Fables. And uh, they were interested in all the different things I did. Oh, cool. So that's when wearing all those different hats really served a purpose. So, mm -hmm. And that, that's fun to see is like when your niche doesn't feel like a niche because you're doing all these different things and once in a while the stars align mm -hmm. and that's exactly what those directors wanted. They wanted someone that could play a West African xylophone and sing and act and dance and help in creating the story and writing the story. Wow. So Big deal. it was fun. And so I did lots of things like that, like three-month regional theater shows until uh, in 1998, I was like, I'm ready for something new, you know? And I didn't know what it was, but I knew I, I wanted something new. And I saw an advertisement for Cirque du Soleil at the dance studio where I would, you know, go take classes. And I remember I wrote the information down on a piece of paper and I put it in my pocket. Mm. And I promptly forgot about it. And I washed my clothes, you know, and totally <laughs> was folding clothes and found something in the yeah. pocket. And I was like, oh, yeah, you know. So they were just saying if you're a singer, send a homemade, or not a homemade, they said sing a, send a demo tape. And if you're a dancer, send a reel or a video of you dancing. And I just thought, well, Cirque du Soleil, I love what they do. I, I can't imagine they would hire me because I'm not flexible at all. <laughs> <laughs> like, even though I'm a dancer, there's, I couldn't imagine it. But I just thought, maybe I'll just audition as a singer, you know? And so I made a literally a homemade demo on, on tape. Mm. Like, I don't even know how I did it, but I, like, remember how you could just record yeah, remember, yourself? Yeah. And so I just did that, and I sang three different songs and sent it in, and, and then one thing led to the next, and that's what got me out of New York and into Cirque. Wow. Uh, how long Where were they on? based? They're based in Montreal. Oh, okay. You yep. said, yeah, go back. But they were coming. So what they did is they called me and said, oh, we're coming to New York. We'd like you to come audition. So I went uh, for this singing audition, and I sang for them. And then they were, like, whispering. And they're like, it's, you know, this looks like uh, on your resume you have uh, so much uh, dancing experience. You know, this is a terrible French accent. So if you're <laughs> French, do not be, you know, offended. <laughs> But I'm going to keep going with it. So I was like, yeah, I'm actually a dancer who sings. And they're like, oh, do you do any uh, cultural, any from your country, you know? And I was like, yeah, yeah, you know? And then they're whispering, you know? And they said, um, can you do some uh, Indian dance while you sing an Indian song? <laughs> And I'm thinking, well, oh, we don't crap. really do Do I know that. any Indian songs? Or I mean, plus that's not something we do. That's not no. in our... Unless you're talking about Bollywood, which yeah. you're not even really singing, but that's not a thing. So, I, but my answer, I was like, absolutely. Of course. Of course. <laughs> For you? Sure. So I did some Odissi. Oh, wow. I, had stu I was studying Odissi at the time. Whipped that card out, didn't I you? I whipped that out <laughs> while I whipped out an old song from Humki Sise Yeah. Do you know that music, that Bollywood movie? He might know. Yeah, it's not coming to me. Depends right now. So, if I said let that song, he'll know. <laughs> yeah, of course it is. It's a yeah, So I just started yeah. singing that while I'm doing Odissi, and of course, like every <laughs> classical Indian like guru is rolling in their yeah. grave right oh, now. What are you doing? What are you doing? Blasphemy! But you know, it worked. It worked, and then they were intrigued, and then they asked me to come to the dance audition the next day, which this is another story because I got 
to the audition the next day. They told me the time to come. They said, come at 11. I come, and I'm knocking on the door, and nobody answers. And oh I knock, and I knock. And I asked someone, I was like, have you seen anybody in here? And they're like, I thought I saw some people earlier, but maybe oh, not no. now. So what I was, happened? I literally thought it wasn't meant to be. Mm. And I turned around, and I started walking away. And they opened the door. She's like, oh, I am so sorry. We gave you the wrong time. We started at 9 o'clock. Oh, Please God. come in. And she's like, just warm up a little. We've already like gone through the first part of it. Yeah. And somehow through that whole day, like cut after cut after cut, I remained until the very end. Wow. And then they put me on their bank of artists. So it's like once they put you in the bank, they say, if a role comes up that we think you'd be good for, we'll pitch you to the producers. Wow. So, so it's still not certain. No. No. That's wow. the theme of our life, right? Still <laughs> not certain. That's yeah. my memoir. Still not certain. <laughs> that's perfect. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, so that's how then eventually they called me and they had originally first called me about a movie and then that fell through and then they called me for the show that I ended up doing, which is called Dralion. Okay. And how long did that go? Um, the actual show, they kept going for 10 years. They wanted me to sign for three years. I negotiated for two years. And at the Why end of the two years, I just, to commit to something mm. for three years seemed... It's hard call. A lot, yeah. And it's a hardcore schedule. It's like 10 shows a week. What? In one place or are you traveling? You travel, you stay in each city for about two and a half, three months. Between okay. one and a half and three months. Okay. And you do 10 shows a week. Which is so that's it like, sound it is as insane as it sounds. Yeah. So it's like lunch, matinee and evening. Yeah. So Monday dark, Tuesday two shows, Wednesday two shows. No, sorry, Tuesday one show, Wednesday one show, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday two shows. Wow. And then you get like usually you get a week off between each city, which is really nice. Yeah, you need to recuperate. Yeah. Your body must be going through yeah. all the motions. Yeah. And it's a three hour show. And yeah. how long how many cities was it like? Did you uh, in two years, I did, I think, maybe eight cities, like three cities in Canada, and then we came down to Santa Monica and a bunch of cities in California, and then uh, Denver. Uh, we were also in, oh, I can't remember all the cities. We were in, um, I wasn't in D.C. Where was I? Wow, I'd have to, I have to remember all the cities, yeah. but about eight cities, I think. And did you like it? I loved I love touring. Yeah. I love going to all these new places and having time to like explore. And I love the, the social aspect mm. of being with a bunch of people. How many people were in the show? There was about like, I would say 35 is probably what the cast is. And our cast was a, a large portion of them were from China. Mm. So they brought a whole acrobatic troupe from China and oh. then trained them for this show. And then everyone else, a lot of them were French Canadian or... Uh, we had one person from Brazil, one person from Cote d'Ivoire, um, and then one person from the Ukraine, and one person from Bulgaria. And then I was the only American in the cast mm -hmm. for the time that I was in it. And uh, yeah, I loved the touring. I was exhausted, though. Yeah, I was going to ask, how do you keep your mind in the game and your body in the game? So the, my body was totally not in the game because I, so I had an injury when I was 19 years old, like second year, right after my first year of college. And honestly, that was a game changer, but not really because I kept going because mm. it was one of those injuries that doesn't have a cure. It's Ugh. not like, oh, you just put this brace on it or you just rest for six months. It's like an alignment issue mm. that is oh, super man. complicated. And so... That's what got me into uh, Pilates. I started Ooh. doing it to rehab. But anyway, that's why I was, I, I mean, I have had chronic pain my entire career, but oh it was like, goodness. what are you going to do? Stop right when you started? Like, just stop at 19 and, and just give it up? Yeah. So that's what it was, is that I was performing in the show, and I was just constantly in pain. Wow. I was constantly in the physiotherapist's office. And just, you know, but it's like, you bleed for your art. You know, it was just one of those things. And, and yes, the question of how do you like, how do you. Because it's the same thing every day. It's the day, same right? thing every day. Yeah. It's like, it's not, the, it's exactly the same. If you yeah. even do it, deviate a little bit, the whole thing is going to Well, the go, good right? thing. So there's two things. One thing is I created my role. 
so I could keep making changes within it. So not every single step had to be the same, mm. but the general the umbrella of it, right? The music's the same, the general theme is the same, your character's the same. Mm. But I could keep refining and honing my character throughout those two years. But the other thing I learned, and I didn't realize this, is that is basically how anal I am when it comes to being a performer. <laughs> like a lot of people phone it in after a while. Like a lot of really good people, like mm. kind of go, oh, I'm just gonna phone it in and have some fun with this and goof off. And for me, I'm like, no, the stage is sacred. And for this audience, it's their first time. Yeah. Mm. Like that would dawn on me every single time. And so everyone would make fun of me because I took it so seriously. Yeah. Like jokingly, not like super make fun of me. But when I left the show, you have like an evaluation with the director and she's the director of like all the shows and she sat down with me and you know she's like I know it's been hard for you with your injuries and also creatively I felt like the show could have been a lot better than it was you know and so I was always as a director minded person I kind of felt disappointed in it but you know she said to me she said but I want you to know in of all the performers I've seen on stage she's like I've never seen anybody give it a hundred percent literally every single time Whoa. and that was That's so awesome. like meaningful to me because I just you do it because you feel you have to do it because it's in your being mm. or it's your part of who you are, but you don't realize that people notice it. Yeah. And nobody would notice it except for someone who has been seeing all, seeing the other all of them. Yeah. 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 So That's a wonderful compliment. It is a wonderful compliment. And I also realized no wonder I can't do this all the time because... <laughs> if mentally draining. Totally draining. <laughs> you burn out, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah. You so were you ever out. sick of it? <clears throat> no, I don't think I was sick of it. I just think I was tired of being in pain all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I love, I, yeah, I love the Cause I have magic of it. When we have to do fixed music. Oh, he can't stop. Well, because you are part of a culture. You're part of a musical culture. There's so much about improvisation, right? Mm. So yeah. much about like being so in the moment. It's about trying new things and. And so like when, when you said phone at home or whatever, like that's sometimes when we play our best, when we don't put thought into it, right? When we, well, I wouldn't say yeah. the word isn't effort. That's not the right word. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're, the effort is there, but it's like the shows that we go into going like, okay, you know what, Kamalji, we should like, we should do this and then we should do that. And then don't forget we that. We plan it out. Yeah. And then we get there and then it's fine. But then the shows where it's, but this is, probably since we've had kids where we don't have time to do that kind of the show yeah. where I have to not think about the show till the actual show time yeah because I'm making children's food oh I've got to put the milk in oh I just forgot his milk oh let's go back home totally. oh I just forgot that anything to do with kids yes. happened then we drop the kids off haven't thought about anything I'm like oh, I gen generally know what I'm doing oh my god my dress is wrong oh god i forgot my earrings uh uh stressage get on stage and it's awesome yeah <laughs> it's the I best guess, concert ever. Yeah. that's not phoning it in it's not phoning yeah it it's in. not it's, the right phrase it, no that's actually you're you're just <clears throat> connecting to the moment of like yeah. you're drawing on your improvisational it, abilities. Our training yeah, yeah. And, and that, that's different because it's just you too if you are yeah. part of a a huge show where you're part of the orchestra let's say yeah. you have to do the same thing because all these other right. things are relying on it yeah but in which your... is our which our culture is different right? yeah we don't yeah. have like that big orchestra yeah, yeah. unless uh, you were part of an orchestra for let's say a bollywood movie or something like yeah. that or or an orchestra in general or a theater or something right. yeah or a theater exactly mm. yeah so yeah in the situations where i have had to do like night after night after night of fix stuff I, I lose it <laughs> yeah it's not she'll like, thing. She'll, yeah she'll, I'm, I can do it it's she'll, fine she'll pull through she has the discipline <laughs> yeah. and then I'll I'll deviate like I'll just be like I'm just gonna do this now instead I don't mind going through the motions now and again <laughs> yeah but there's a there is an art I found in f rediscovering finding something new in something yeah. that is the same right it's almost like parenting like you're going to have these routines day in, day out, day in, day out. You're going to go crazy if you don't find some new joy or something. Yeah. I mean, you can like expand that to your life. I mean, we just wake up and we go to sleep every day. Yeah. Same thing. And we're always just trying to reinvent or be creative within the structure mm. that we yeah, have. Yeah, so that, that, that's exactly right. We, like be creative within that structure. Yeah. So we, I mean, we do the same thing, but it's the, 
it's to let go and f- let something else take over, then that's... And it's such a great feeling. Yeah, that is the greatest is feeling the in the world. the best feeling. Because you know and what? people you, notice it as well. Yes. Yeah, in like she'll play dog yaman or something for the gazillionth time. <laughs> but yeah. then it, the, the times, like when something new comes, like then that's the greatest. And that's the ephemeral part of being a live performer. Yeah. That's the thing that you can't capture. Yeah. You know, that each moment is unique. And in that moment, what's what I think, the way I feel, why it feels so good is that it's not about you. You are removed from it. It becomes about something bigger. Like your ego. It's not about I'm controlling all this. Mm-hmm. I've prepared all this. You just become this like vessel. You're like, woo, yeah. all this is just coming through me. Yeah. You yeah. know? I, and I think other people feel that. You just feel the yeah. largeness of that. Yeah. That it's not these two great performers doing the thing. It's like, woof, they've tapped into yeah. something the yeah. that we are part of it. also. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. experience it too. And when we experience it as listeners too, yeah. when we go to shows. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that is the greatest thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. So who are your, uh, who's out there listening to us right now? Who, who, who are your listeners? We've got what Manju and uh, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, you, you know them by name. Yeah, we know all two of them. Two friends. Hi, hi, friends. No, Thank you for funny, listening. Like, I, you really don't know. Uh, I, so I went to England this uh, this week, and I ran into so many people that were like, "Oh, we heard you on the podcast," and then they like would recite some of the silly jokes or whatever that I do. People, you like, mean you would run into random people on the street? No, no. I was or? at a so I was at a celebration of Gunnar Fevji's five hundred and fiftieth birthday. Yeah. So there was a huge like there was like thousands of people there. Right. And and then I played tabla there. Yeah. So then afterwards they're like, "Oh, we know you. Like we listened to you on YouTube, and also we we've heard this episode of your podcast, or we heard those two episodes. Uh-huh. Oh, that was really funny when you said that, and I was like." What? This is a different country. What? <laughs> that must be cool, that's though. Neat. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. So, it's so we cool. have no idea. Are they, so, do you think most of them are artists or lovers of the arts, or even just? I mean, uh, they probably are, must start off like that, right? And they all spread yeah. to none. Yeah, I mean, the few people I talked to weren't artists or. Yeah. Oh, so okay. That's nice. Yeah, they that's weren't cool. musicians. Yeah. So jokes. So you, she makes memorable jokes, huh? <laughs> I always say something stupid. When he's not too tired. <laughs> or when he's too tired. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we had a fun... Um, how did it... Who introduced us? I think Ravi. I think. Or am I wrong about that? Did he? Okay. Ravi Deo? When, yeah, when, when I was looking for... Yeah, he introduced us. Um, oh, wow. You know Ravi for that long. Yeah. That's, so that's wow. interesting. And it was jo- Joseph Trapanese. Yeah, Trapanese. I like that you make him even more Italian. Yeah. Though, <laughs> Trapanese. I always, I always say that. Trapanese. So we we did a gig. Um, what's it called? Echo Society. Oh yeah. Uh, Two years ago. Yeah. If, Two days ago. Years yeah. ago. Oh. <laughs> and he's he's he is one of the one of the founders. One of the founders of that oh, like wow. Echo Society. What is it? So they, I guess they put on. It's a group of. It's a group of film composers. Of legit film composers, who just do fun stuff on the side called the Echo Society. Yeah, like they they put on a gig or two every year in some abnormal way, I guess. Yeah. You know, it's not like in a concert hall like this. The one we this, I guess With, we were both. And on they there. like bring in composers as well. So. Um, so the one we yeah. did was at this mansion in Silver Lake. And like every room of this mansion from the 1930s, like everything's been preserved, had a different, a different. musical performance. And then mm. uh, and the are, audience and just keeps and it moving was an, around. They all have mm. themes. So the theme for that show was family. Yeah, the theme the family. So everyone did something. So he was a part of that. So I ran into him like a couple of years ago. He mentioned the that show, I think, right? Yeah. Because that was the first time I met him. That was Babu... Bahu Bahu Yeah. You sound like a white <laughs> person, <laughs> dude. Like, but, but, uh, I but, forgot but, the <laughs> order, so then I started saying all three of them at the same time. <laughs> I just, I just finally gave up. I was like, "Be cubed." Be cubed. <laughs> yeah. So be cubed. <laughs> so uh, you, you bumped into him, and then he told you about. Yeah. This so then he, he yeah, he's like, he's like, perform. "Oh, we did that recording." No, we and... worked for a. We were brought on board with a composer he'd invited. Called oh. Amrita Vaz. So okay. they invite lots of different, yeah. however many composers there were, and they 
and got then the their, composers they got their find stuff their, together if they yeah. needed a crew they'd get their own crew so we were part of their crew yeah oh, he was really okay. like he was super nice and yeah because like, yeah. he's gone down to great things and he's doing great things he is and um and he was just like the same guy <laughs> yeah man i used to spend hours in that little apartment Remember? When yeah, he was part? like super. I remember, like, I called him from my San Diego apartment, just with like, "Hey, I'm trying to cut this thing in Logic, and it's not cutting." And he's like, "Oh, press like Alt to V, <laughs> really? Control, blah blah blah." I'm like, "Oh, that's it. Okay, cool." And then like, click. He was like super. He was awesome. Yeah, I loved working. I mean, I haven't seen him in a long time. How did you get to know him? Actually, he was in the graduate composers or music program at UCLA when I was in the choreography program okay so you went to usa LA yeah too. exactly yeah. and we had a uh well, my teacher of uh our choreography class dave rusev called it a love match where he said <laughs> we're going to have a day where we bring in the composers to share five minutes of their work each of you know to us and we're going to share five minutes of our work and then let you guys mingle and i think i always know what I, i'm very musical because that's my background and i I, I know what I like and I know who I like. And as soon as I heard his music and his demeanor, whatever it was, I went up to him and I said, hey, I have this project that, I mean, it was in the infancy stages yeah. and he worked with me on it for the first 18 minute solo. And then I expanded it to be a whole hour long solo and he worked with me on it. And this is before he was a big shot, you know? Yeah. So I got him for cheap. <laughs> but um man he worked a lot for me i'm i oof, i because i get real in there i mean you've worked with me but yeah. that show that piece i made was so specific it was like i was in the room with him and he didn't know anything about indian music mm -hmm. and i was basing it a lot of it on old folk songs women's songs yeah. from rajasthan right so I needed him to stay as true to different rules, right? Like there are different rules I was playing with. I would play with, you know, different dukadas and, and I didn't want the music in the background to be traditional, but it, I needed to explain to him what sum was, what the cycles yeah. were. Mm. And he is just, he was brilliant, brilliant. The way he married his own uh, musical background with his understanding of Hindustani music. Yeah, it turned out really, really well. It I remember really we heard, we went to the like premiere, I guess, and or was was that the first at time UCLA, was, yeah, UCLA, right? Yeah, that was the first time, right? Very first. Time. It was really awesome, and the music was like gorgeous. Gorgeous. Um, oh, cool. Every time I do that piece, you know, you're all with me. That's what's so <laughs> neat. I really feel that I'm like all the people that were part of the music. You're there every single time. It's such a this intimate thing, and I think about it. I, I you know, when you were uh, tuning. Yeah. Remember? That's yeah. in there. That's yeah, in Yeah, that was Joseph's idea. that Because yeah. I was just tuning. He's like, yeah. wait, stop. Yeah, yeah, you told me that. Yeah. I yeah. used all of that, and that's this whole section where I turn into a man, and I'm like walking back to the clothesline to put on my gunji, and like just, you know, it's like, <laughs> it, it's so cool. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we ran into him a couple of years, and he was like the same guy. Hmm. It wasn't like he wasn't like oh I've done Tron and Dexter and all that stuff. He's just like the same guy. We need yeah. to call him up. Yeah, and no, and, and then like the other thing was so I guess he's on our mailing list, um, and I I I was just telling him like uh, oh we have this thing coming up. He's like yeah yeah I get your emails like and you did this and you did that and you did this. I was like oh, wow, wow you like remember them. us? Yeah, isn't <laughs> so, that neat? Yeah, it was really cool. It's a good guy. <laughs> yeah, it's probably what's you know got him as far as it has is that he yeah. is so personable and so easy to work with and that's key yeah i don't think people realize that but that that's key is being a, just a nice guy a gracious like person. i think this like era of like divas and like crazy artists is like it's dying it doesn't work that way mm. no it doesn't it yeah i, I don't think so yeah, yeah. Like, you're just gonna have problems if you're like that or we hope you do. Yeah. <laughs> That's really Let's what it comes down to. I mean, to. We've, seen some, we've seen some success in like some gigs. Um, like there's this organization that's given us gigs. Uh, and I think it's solely because we were easy to work with. Like they said, be at yeah. Soundcheck at 2 and we were there and at we 155. There, yeah. 
Um, and they're like, nobody ever does that. Wow, and, isn't that and, interesting? And then, and then, like, yeah, they, we are always like, they're like, if you can get us like a bio and three pictures and like your tech writer within like a month, that'd be great. And then I like, I'll send it like within ten minutes. Mm. And they're like, we've never had that happen. I'm like, it's so easy. You just like, it's all in Dropbox. It's the same writer. <laughs> it's the same thing, like, right? My bio hasn't changed in nine years. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and you just like right click and send. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. it's amazing how like they, they, should, they were like, yeah, we. That it's doesn't... true. I mean, being a producer, yeah. you know, and having to chase after people, um, yeah. The I I don't and being an artist as well mm. as a producer, I, then I I don't have a lot of tolerance for yeah. people that you have yeah. to keep reminding. <clears throat> like I almost want to say, aren't you embarrassed <laughs> that I have to keep reminding you? Like, yeah. are you really that good? You know? Yeah. yeah. So I know that there are some things that you can, like sometimes for a, an organization or a set of people or producers or whatever, like it's not even about like, can you do the job? They just assume that you can. Mm -hmm. Your musicians, we know you can play. Now are you easy to work with? Mm -hmm. Because if not, then there's more, there's other musicians that are can fill our slot that totally. are easy to work with. But do you ever find sometimes, see, here's where I go wrong because I am a pretty outspoken person and I believe strongly in the integrity of the artist. And I've been in so many situations, especially with Cirque du Soleil, where I had to push back a lot because either the pay wasn't enough or the conditions weren't right or there was just this lack of knowledge of what an artist needs or should have or just basic things, basic respect, you know? And, uh, and, being easy to work with, it's like, like I don't know if I'm really good at being easy to work with. If if there's lots so, of things that are not, yeah. So I, I so being, the, we the, struggle the with that too. The story that we're telling yeah. uh, is, is is where that part's taken care of. Yes, the money's like good. Everything, yeah. or but just not even good. just the money, the just money, the way they yeah. treat sort of treat you, or the way so, that they prepare things so that they're also on time and not like last minute. Yeah. So know, this so has to do with, uh, <laughs> I'm just going to say it. Indian organizations are <laughs> terrible. Absolutely. And like Western organizations are awesome. Yeah. Like uh, we have a tech writer and I call out uh, like specific microphones, specific stand sizes, specific stage sizes, carpet covering, pillows, water bottles, all that stuff, right? Indian organizations that goes out the window. It's like look, they don't even look at they it. They didn't look at it. They actually don't even open the attachment. Like Western organizations, like we've done universities. We did like that Norton Simon one where you just saw us. Um, what was it? So there's, there's other ones too. But basically yeah. any of the Western ones, like they read that to a T and almost to a fault. Yeah. Because I think my, my tech writer is like sort of generic because yeah. sometimes you're playing like in a little museum little room sure. or you're Every playing time. like a big outdoor concert hall so i call out some specific like speakers as well like uh i need uh, speakers that and i need monitors of this type and like if possible get me this type of mixer and then like i think it was norton simon yeah. where they called and they're like listen we've had uh, our committee of yeah, we were people. like oh my god we're gonna lose and the then gig they cc'd, <laughs> cc'd like four or five people like it got into this big thing and they're like we investigated but the cost of like hanging this array of speakers is just too and you're much. Like, no, 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 no. And I go, <laughs> yeah, 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 and I go no, like that's it's okay. Yeah. I, I go, that's like when we're playing outdoors. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you guys already have a concert hall. That's yeah. like I've been there. It's yeah. already done. Yeah. Like it's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it, yeah. it was just like, and then I was like, you know what? I've never had somebody read like my tech Actually writer in such yeah, detail. detail. Yeah. And then oh yeah, then I think it also says like if if. Uh, was it like vegetarian meal or something? Yeah. And they're like, oh, well, we won't be able to provide a vegetarian meal, but we can do blah, blah. I'm like, dude, that's for like when we're touring. Like, yeah. you're 45 minutes from our yeah, house. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm going to go good. home and eat. Like, yeah. No, it's but it's good. just, it's the professional, it's awesome. the, yeah. you know, all the. Yeah. And it, yeah, I remember there was a gig I did in dotted. Chicago at like the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. And I think I said, I called out that the riser needs to be 24 inches. Yeah. And then they were like, for whatever reason, the legs are only going to 22. It's supposed to go to 24, but it's only 22. Uh, is there any way that you'll work with us on this? <laughs> like, it wasn't even like, first, I was like, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> right. But what a what a kind yeah. kindness, right? Yeah. Not leading with, you know, arrogance. Yeah. Or, deal with it, yeah. Yeah. It, that's, that's exactly Which what is, I mean. And then when you go on to the other side, right, like, the... I mean, I shouldn't name names, but there's some organizations we have done, yeah. where, yeah, 
they're like, yeah, there's no riser. And I'm like, well, we can't play on the floor. Like it's concrete. Can you put like at least a table sheet or a rug or something? They're like, no. Nah. And then you just you have to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta, yeah. you gotta sort of see like how is, worth it is. It how, to yeah. Is this guy going to like yeah. find something? And then, you know, maybe if I talk to his wife or whatever, maybe <laughs> really she'll nicely. be able to track something down from her house or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Like it's, it's, it can get crazy. Yeah. yeah. And in, in some cases it has to do with how much funding an organization has. It's like last, so last year I helped produce or I did produce uh, the Art Walla Festival, yeah. literally because nobody else was doing it. And I thought, well, I'm in a position right now where I can because I've had this full-time job. So I just wanted to keep this thing going. Um, and, you know, I told everyone, I told all the artists, I said, the one thing I want to do is this year try to pay everyone. Paying everyone means a hundred bucks each. That's it. Yeah. So if that doesn't sound right to you, just know this is a real like, I'm just one person trying to put this together based on whatever I have in front of me or whatever was collected last year in you know ticket sales or whatever. And uh, so then it comes down to just making sure that that everybody understands what the parameters are that this is what we have but I want to make the experience as positive as it can be I want to make sure that it sounds right that it looks right and so I'm investing in all of those things mm. and you know if you have somebody that can talk to you like I remember we had uh we were working with Paul Livingstone and they needed uh, a riser and because we had this one stage where we were having multiple performers, right? We'd have a dance piece. And then right after that, we'd have a stand-up comedy. And right after that, we'd have a... Right. The riser might be difficult. So then I had to work with them about like, well, what else could we do? And could we get rugs? And I said, sure, I will manage to get rugs, you know? And then figuring all that out. And it just... it just You can tell if somebody yeah. is putting in some effort based yeah. on whatever their resources are Definitely. and it's not that we're like well we're only going to perform for people who have all the resources in the world and can give us everything we want yeah we just want a a nice experience a nice exchange Definitely. you know you don't want to feel like hey we're doing you a favor by giving you a place to perform <laughs> yeah. you know you're like well, oh man people, i can't right? stand too. <laughs> you should be opportunity happy. here yeah. exposure here expose yeah <laughs> Yeah, oh, and sometimes man. you are happy to do that, you know, like, but you don't want someone coming in with that mm. attitude. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, we should, there's like, uh, there can be a whole like series of episodes <laughs> dedicated to some of the people that we've said like no to, right? Because, because of the way they come in and, and just like the demean you. Yeah, they really do. It's like, I've been, do you know how hard I've worked to get where I am pl practicing and playing? You have no idea. And you're doing me a favor? <laughs> no. Yeah, it's just lack of under, I don't know what it is. I don't know. There, what was, it this, is, but... uh, there was this, there was this, the uh, wedding thing. And oh my goodness. I can't tell you how many times I've been like in the wedding <laughs> itself. I'm just a guest. She thought, aren't you going to get up and do something? I'm like, oh what? Oh, my God. do some dance, do some <laughs> song. I'm like, but I'm not 12 anymore, uncle. Like, yeah. I, I'm not like dancing monkey say. anymore. I'm not dancing. <laughs> my husband always says that. He's like, dance, monkey, dance. You know, come on. Yeah. And I, I feel bad because it's like, these are our people. Yeah. And yet, like, yeah, just, it. yeah. Well, so what I was going to say was that there's this wedding gig that came up. And the the bride kept like so we quote we quoted uh our price and um she kept saying you you're and the price that i quoted you're the highest had, vendor yeah had wiggle room in it right i would have come down yeah yeah but she kept saying you're literally doing the least amount of work out of all the vendors yeah yeah see crazy. and i go what yeah. I go, it's just such yeah. a wrong beat. It's just, you, and, they don't like, know. That was her Every opening line. They just yeah. don't know. And then somebody yeah. in our like band or whatever you want to call it, quartet, 
said like let me get on the phone with her maybe i can talk her down and you can be calm because i at this point i'm heated right because so she just I kept saying con- weird comments totally. i send a conference call yeah. <laughs> she's not though doesn't she like know music or something yeah or like, her mom or something yeah so i don't know i mean we have gazillions of stories those are like gazillions <laughs> we should just I, we should start a new podcast just on that <laughs> <laughs> the gripe session <laughs> yeah <laughs> well i think we're almost out of time and we had so many other stories to talk about, gonna, but you're gonna have to you're gonna, gonna have to come over. back. Absolutely, <laughs> we'll have, yeah, because I haven't even taken the the full ra- racing stripe tour <laughs> you of all the other rooms. To, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very cool though. Thank you. Well, yeah, I like it. Why don't you tell people where they can find you, uh, so they can check your work out? Well, I mean, I'm on Facebook and sheetalgandhi.com, and you know my videos are up there. But I'm trying to think if I have anything coming up. Nothing like right around the corner. Um, but yeah, come to my home. That's the next thing. Yeah. I just cool. want to have people over and I do want to have, uh, um, we're getting electricity set up so that we can have uh, musical programs oh, and cool. just do some salons and create like, I don't know, just a space, an informal space uh, for Sounds performance. Yeah. That's awesome. We'll bring the little ones. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and uh, you guys can check us out at absolutefocus.co and... You can find everything else from there. Yeah. (laughs) Check us out. All roads lead. (laughs) All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. (laughs) Thanks. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to hit the subscribe button.